Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is Ulam Rtuzalanga, lecturer in education from Government Degree College, Kashmir. Assalamu alaikum to all of you friends. Here we are in complete quarantine due to this pandemic of uh, Corona, COVID-19, which has affected the entire world. It is a contagious virus. We have to be very careful and we don't have to interact socially with anybody. This is the order of Almighty to save our life. Well, students, today we learn about an English poem of first year class, Character of Happy Life, which has been, the poem has been written by Sir Henry Wotton, who uh, was a poet of 17th century and he was also considered to be the poet, religious poet and a critic and philosopher, diplomat. This poem also shows his religious bent of mind. He shares how one can be happy. When we talk about happiness, there are certain some questions which arise in our mind, whether happiness comes from inside us or it is something which is from the outer position from the outer bodies. So these questions are going to be answered when we read out this poem. Before we read out this poem and learn the explanation of various stanzas of this poem, uh, I have jogged down some uh, key points which uh, you can consider the central idea of this poem. We'll uh, talk and keep on reading these areas. The poem is totally based on religious bent of mind and uh, the poet thinks that the person who is leading a happy life or is happy, he works by his own will. He does not try to please others. He does not try to make other people happy with him, content with him all the time. But he does what he thinks is right. And uh, you know, we need some protection, some safeguards, some shields to protect ourselves. When we read out this poem, his safeguard or the person who is leading a happy life, his safeguard is honest thought. He is always honest in his thinking and in his doing as well. He is not jealous. And speaking the truth is his skill. He does his work. He deals with people only by speaking the truth. You know, speaking the truth saves us from a lot of adversities and troubles which we can see in our society while acting the inverse position the other way and uh, he is not the slave of his desires you know when we demand more and more while looking at the people living around us then we become slave of those desires we do either right or wrong work in order to fulfill or achieve or meet those desires. So the person who is happier in this poem according to Sir Henry Wharton is not the servant of his desires. He is happy, contented, whatever he meets, whatever is given to him by Almighty Allah or by the hard working of his, he is happy with that. You know this is also a saying of uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam be thankful to Almighty what you have been given and also look at the persons who are leading a lower or underprivileged life than you then you will become thankful and you won't be uh, desiring something which is uh, beyond your uh, uh, potential he is not a slave of his desires he neither cares for his unnecessary praise and ne critic, negative critic. He is totally against a flattery. He does not like to be praised unnecessarily and the praise which he does not uh, deserve. And also he does not care of the persons who become the obstacle and hindrances of his uh, way, the way which he is leading. Life has been given to us, the span is, you know, calculated, we cannot increase it, we can lead it with our deeds, 
if they are very straightforward then the life becomes easier and smoother way he does not think that he must be pressed he keeps his life free from rumors he does not bother what people are thinking about him in their private lives or in, in his absentia what do you think he does not care of you know these uh, uh, psychological illness or disorders only come to you when you think what do the people think of you this is some sort of chain which is binding you unless you are free from that chain you won't be able to lead a good life so this person these are the characters of happy life according to sir henry water this person is free from rumors he does not think what people think of him in their privacy he always follows his conscience conscience is a gift of god conscience is a some sort of programming some sort of uh, software which has been built in us as a human so that is uh, you know uh, i i would uh, use some sindhi words uh, in order to explain it further rahmani and shaitani bei sochu insaan je zehn mein built in ahin ay asa ke hukum iyo ahe to try to follow those rahmani uh, ways rahmani ways rahmani ways is actually the conscience of a person and let me tell you one thing that the basic or humanistic need of an individual is a peace of mind the person who owes the peace of mind is only one who is thinking better for others who is honest who is uh, truthful who is not uh, uh, you know selfish who is selfless and uh, this is the only property that you are leading a good life uh, which is uh, beneficial for others fruitful for others and also you are collecting the prayers of people this is what humanistic need but one who desires for more material who desires for uh, more uh, monetary things and assets to be uh, included in his life that is i think to somehow not a humanistic desire this uh, will create some kind of unrest in one's life this would create some kind of Uh, anxiety depression or he would be starting to think about uh, securing those things which are uh, neither uh, uh, belonging to that person we have seen so many castles places whose masters are uh, no more in this world and uh, they are masterless so the peace of mind should be the desire foremost desire of an individual to lead a happy life he follows his conscience he passes or spends his day or time with uh, reading spiritual or religious books and uh, good friends he has limited but very good and devoted friends who uh, uh, give him time and uh, give him good company which is uh, uh, which is uh, excluded from these jealousy and uh, those uh, negative thinking type of things and he prays to god either late or early he goes to his place of worship he prays to god you know why he only prays to god because he thinks that god is uh, pray worthy god is uh, god is to be worshiped of there is no other entity than almighty in this world to be prayed to he prays to god not in wish of having his uh, wishes or wills to be completed no 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 not at all he does not pray to god for these uh, uh, material gifts no he prays to god because god is for the praying he prays he prays to god only for his grace and uh, he is not afraid of failure of success he does not bother to join any uh, big persons or notable persons where he could be praised or given this uh, 
sorry. Worldly benefits, not at all. He prays to God for his graceness. He does not have any fear of failure or success. Here I would read out this poem for you again and try to explain verse by verse to you. How happy is he born and taught. You know, person either has some good things in his genes or receives some good things from the nurtures, from the atmosphere. That serves not another's will. He is not the slave of his own will or he does not try to please others. Whose armor is his honest thought and simple truth his utmost skill. As I earlier stated that his safeguard is honest thought and his skill or mastery of doing the works is truthfulness. Whose patience are not his masters are. Whose patience not his masters are means he is not the slave of his desires whose soul is still prepared for death he does not have collected he has not collected such a, an assets which uh, make him fear from death no 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 he is ready and willing to go away in the next phase of life untied unto the world by care of public fame or private breath he does not have any he is free from rumors who invites none that chance to raise? He even does not keep any jealousy with those persons who are more successful than he, nor wise who never understood how deepest wounds are given by praise, nor rules of state but rule of good. He always follows those rule of goods. Who hath his life from rumors freed? He does not care what people think of him. Whose conscience is a strong retreat. He only follows what Rahmani thinking has been embodied in him. He always tries to follow those good things. Whose state can neither flatter feed nor ruin make oppressor great. Even some devastation is coming into his life. He is not upset with those. Who God doth later only pray more of his grace than gift to land. He prays to God. Because God is graceful, God is praiseworthy. He prays to God, he does not have any monetary uh, benefits in his uh, mind or desires. And entertain harmless day with a religious book or friend. He spends his day with uh, reading by reading any book or having a company of good friends. This man is freed from servile hands of hopes to rise or fear to file. People try to keep some, you know, uh, irrelevant type of hopes that if they keep company of such 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 persons, they are going to get the greatness. Or if they do not join their company, those, those persons can create some unsuccessfulness or failure to him. He does not bother of them. Lord of himself, though not of land. He does not have any materialistic or physical assets in this world, but still, he is a lord of himself. He is thinking, he is leading carefree life. He does not think what people would think of him and having nothing yet at all. He does not have monetary things which are visible, but still, he is the happiest person in this world. This is the message which Sir John, uh, which Sir uh, Henry Wharton has tried to explain in this poem. I hope you might have understood this lecture, might have uh, helped some students to read it uh, thoroughly, understand it. Thank you very much for listening to me. Oh.